Okay, it's that time again. We are about to jive with the Jet. Joining us is cornerback Justin Hardy, who joined the Jets in 2021 and is captain of the special teams. Justin, thank you so much for joining us. The very first question I've got to throw in your direction is all about your pinned tweet. You own a pizza restaurant. Yeah. Of course I was going to start there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most definitely, man. Uh, got into the pizza industry. I want to say, like, got into it, trying to push forward in 2019 and 2020 you know my dream came true so so you own a papa john's franchise i do papa john's is a franchise pizza place here here in the united states richie so he owns oh, a pop got him here we got him here yeah he oh you got the okay so nice. you know all about nice. it oh, yeah. now so oh, yeah. where is the uh the franchise you own uh, I have one in New Orleans, and I also have one in Waveland, Mississippi. Look at this. So he's got multiple franchises yeah. already. When did you know that that was something you wanted to maybe get into in terms of expanding your repertoire here with getting into your business after yeah. football? So uh, after my rookie year, um, I was just sitting there. You know, it's a long off season, And I'm like, man, I got, you know, three college degrees, and I'm just sitting here uh, waiting on the season to come. And I'm like, I'm not – generating any revenue right now i'm just waiting on the season and i was like i uh i want more um so i was i remember even trying to just trying to get like a some type of deal with nike under armor so i didn't have to pay for that kind of stuff because i was buying it so much and nobody would ever take a chance on me so i was like i'm a, you know i'm gonna make some make another move for myself and um i was fortunate enough to get into that and get into business and you know it's a definitely a, a different beast but i'm i'm glad i'm getting a head start on it how hands-on are you? Uh, Love just that. Uh, talk to my uh, manager frequently, uh, at least a few times a week for sure. Uh, you know, of course, got to focus on this. Most importantly, got to keep the main thing the main thing. But, you know, definitely on my day-to-day -day operations with my manager. Cool. And with that in mind, uh, what is it the huge kill have got in common? Say that one more time. With oh, that yeah. in mind, oh, what yeah. is it? That, yeah. So, uh, it, from my understanding, there are three African American uh, Papa John's franchisees, and me and Shaquille are two of those, and we are also part of the same fraternity, Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. So that's you know something pretty special. And he went to school down at LSU, so yeah. he's you know got roots down in that yeah. part of the country and whatnot. Have you ever do you talk to Shaq at all? Have you ever met Shaq uh, because I, of this? I met, I met Shaq actually in All Star Weekend. Um, and then I actually texted him not too long ago, just, you know, just catching up, man. I told him I'd love for him to come to a game and stuff to support and stuff. So it'd be special if he do. Shaq has New Jersey roots, Richie. I don't know if you knew that. He's, he, he grew up. He spent some time here in New Jersey because he was an Army brat a little bit, kind of traveling around the country. But, yeah, he, he, he's fully, uh, fully aware of New Jersey. How about that? Yeah. Wow. Every day's a school day, DJ. Listen, Justin, <laughs> one more food-based question. I promise. One more. <laughs> no, that's all good. Favorite. In fact, no, I've got, sorry, I've got two. First things first, does, does pineapple belong on pizza or not? Um, Say my no. personal opinion, no. But, you know, everybody no. has their personal opinions. So I'm sorry. I'm with you on that <laughs> one. No, no. Rich, or Justin, no, I'm, I'm with you on that one. <laughs> um, and favorite pizza, go for it. Um, My favorite pizza, I would just say uh, pepperoni. I'm I'm simple. I'm I'm not too uh, difficult. I'm not too much of a difficult guy. I'd like to keep it plain and simple. Pepperoni is good. Can I tell you this, Richie, on, on the subject of Papa John's at least? Because Justin, of course, is, is an owner of the Papa yeah. John's. They don't do a bad bacon pie. Tried that a couple times. They do a good job with the yeah, bacon nah, pies. Yeah, they, Those are they, good. Yeah, I actually sometimes used to get it. Like when I was living down there, I used to get you know bacon on it sometimes too. It Tasty. Well. Love that. Uh, DG, we should probably talk about football, shouldn't we? Yeah, I would say so. That's his area of expertise <laughs> yeah. more than anything. <laughs> what was it like, Justin, to be involved in a win like you got against uh, Buffalo Bills? Uh, Incredible, uh, right? It was special, man. You, that's, that's what you play this game for, you know, those wins like that, you know, being countered out and, uh, you know, having that pressure on you, man. I, I love those type of games. I love those type of situations. You know, because at the end of the day, it's all, you know, the truth going to come out. You know, uh, the result everybody had us penciled in to lose. But, you know, we all see what the result was. So it's not too much to talk about, um, you know, 24-hour rule. You you know, you embrace this win and then, you you know, you move on. You enjoy the bye week and we see them in a few weeks. You know, Coach Sala, after the game in the locker room, said yesterday that that might have been a surprise to the rest of the NFL, but it wasn't to you guys in yeah. that room. Not How strong all. is the confidence in that group right yeah, now? Uh, I mean, just 
as a man, you should be confident in yourself in general. Let's just put that out there. Um, so just us, <clears throat> us, you know, you having trust within one another, you know, you put that work in, you know, you having a relationship with them guys, man. You got so much confidence within each other, man. That's like, you know, that's, that's all I need is my brother right next to me. So we just go in there, you know, we like I said, we put that work in. We, we got a hell of a group as well. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think it's, you know, kudos and hats off to the guys in the building um, that's on the field, man, because we, we got a special group. I'm not going to lie. Um, as a man, you should be confident in everything you do. I might have to get that tatted on me because that is special. <laughs> Justin, I'm a, I'm just getting into the sport a little bit myself. I'm a brand new fan. So tell us about your role as captain of the special teams. Um, My role is pretty much just rally the troops, man, get us ready to go. Uh, special teams is more so a one play type of deal. Usually every, you know, few plays. Uh, you can have games where you can get 30 special team snaps and you can have some where you get about 12. So it's just, you know, the flow of the game. Um, you know, our our main thing gets to control the to control the field, control the, uh, you know, have the short field for our offense and, you know, a long field for our defense. And, uh, you know, we, we take pride in it. And, I you know, I appreciate the guys I'll be able to go out there with and go battle uh, just because, you know, it's – it's, it's hard, you know, it's, it's not as easy as it looks. And uh, you got to have a different type of attitude to go out there and battle. And like I said, uh, kudos to my guys. And, 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 you know, the special teams has performed at a high level so far this year. I mean, you think back to that Green Bay game. You guys had a block field goal and a block punt in the game. You returned a punt for a touchdown in that game as well. When, when you have those type of game-changing plays take place with the special teams unit. Does that feel even more extra special for you if you're able to walk off the field victorious? Oh, most definitely, man. Just because I, I put my heart and soul in it. I love special teams, man. Special teams has made a way for me and my family. You know, um, so every time, you know, I see my guys making plays on special teams, uh, I love it. You know what I'm saying? It's just like me making one just because, you know, it's all we all together. We all got on jets across our chest. So, it, you know, it, it takes – uh, 11 of us, and you know, every time we go out there and make a play or make something happen, man, it's always something special or something that our team feeds off of. You know, um, definitely it's a lot more plays that we could have made and a lot more plays that we will make this back end of the season. Now it's, you know, it's time to be better than what we were before, you know, finishing the season off. It's your second captaincy in as many years with the Jets. And am I right in saying that the captains are voted for by your teammates? Therefore, I mean, how's that feel? That must be pretty special. Yeah, it's it's definitely uh, an honor to be, you know what I'm saying, a captain of an NFL team just because there's only 32 teams. Uh, we are playing at the highest level. Um, I wasn't a captain in high school. I wasn't a captain in college. Um, so to be able to step into this role and, you know, embrace this role and, and uh, actually, you know, mean what I say, um, it's an honor, you know, it's, it's weight on your shoulders. But like I said, I'm the guy, I want that pressure on me. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm willing to, you know, take one for the team. I'm willing to, you know, sacrifice, do whatever I have to do. You know, just to give the fans a little bit of an inside look as to the week in, week out, as far as the special teams are concerned. You know, the offense, they have their game plan. They prep for the opposing defense. The defense prepares for the opposing offense. You guys as the special teams, you're probably looking at the return game, mm -hmm. how teams like to block up or draw plays and whatnot. So it's going to also change on a week in, week out, depending on who opponent you're going to have, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Every, uh, you know, everybody is different. Every team is different. Every, you know, uh, team has their own culture, you know, whether that's a fast group or a physical group. Uh, and then, you know, I feel like we got a good division of, uh, of special teams, you know, uh, but, you know, we don't care about nobody else, you know, it's all about us. And uh, we're just trying to dominate, you know. Um, we've had some, some, some great games, we've had some good games, and we've had some bad games. Uh, now it's time to just, you know, go back to the drawing board, figure everything all out, and uh, try to find out the best way for us to finish this season strong and to come out on number top on number one on special teams and also just put our team in position to win more games. You know, that's what's most important. You know, rankings can be whatever, but if we are winning games, that's all that really matters. Now, I know you just said that you don't care about anyone else, and I love that mentality, concentrating just on yourself, but with that in mind, I need to ask you, who is the toughest, toughest opponent you've come up against in the NFL? Um, if anyone. 
<laughs> as far as a team, yeah. Um, I would, I would, I would say, uh, you know, respect to them. New England is definitely a tough special teams group. Um, you know what you're getting, man. You're gonna get a physical game. You're gonna get some unusual. Um, you know, they like to have a decent plan on me. But at the end of the day, man, uh, it doesn't really matter. You have to find a way to win. Um, whether they send three guys at me or four guys at me, I really don't care. You know, it's respect to those guys. You know, all the respect to my opponents. But, you know, I play this game to win. I don't just play this game just to be out there. You know, the, the, the organization identified you as a culture guy. You know, you were from a winning program with New Orleans, and yeah. then they signed you last year because they thought you were going to be one of the guys that was going to be instrumental in helping the culture change here and to make this a winning program. Is it rewarding that, look, the job isn't done yet, we know no, that, but how rewarding is it that, you know, you're only a year and a half into this and now you're starting to see the seeds of this blossom to yeah. where, hey, we're talking maybe about a playoff run this year? Um, it's special, man, just to, to go through what we went through last year, you know, uh, even when I, you know, went through personally and stuff, man, you know, just to see this year now, just to see some of the results, just, you know what I'm saying, see winning, because that's all I preached about last year was winning, winning, winning. And that, you know, obviously wasn't the case, but, you know, it's like we uh, built it up to this point. And, um, you know, we got some special guys in the building, man. Like I said, it's, it's really about the guys who who's out there playing on Sundays, man. We really got – and I done been on some special teams, man, from – top down the roster is loaded you know um so just to be on this team and I, I seen it back in you know in the spring uh i just seen what type of just because of the depth we had um i see what type of team we was going to have and I'm, I'm not surprised at all that we are where we are right now some people may be surprised but you know um i'm a true believer in you know the, the work we put in Justin, we've got a little question that's come in on Twitter from a fan over here in the UK who follows at New York Jets UK. And Jordan O'Brien is asking, what has been the major factor for the Jets' sudden rise in form? Seems like the potential has always been there for a few seasons now. So what has clicked all of a sudden? Um, <clears throat> I would say this probably the most talented. Is, I don't know about the past too much, uh, but... This is a very talented team. Let's just say that. Um, a lot of talent in that room. Yeah, um, we we hungry, man. Um, I feel like guys is you know, uh, guys are feeding off of the disrespect uh, all off season. That's all we just got laughed at. I'm one of them guys. I I hate to get laughed at. I don't like to be picked on or none of that type of stuff. So you know, we retaliate. You know, um, our retaliation is what we do on Sundays. You know what I'm saying? We don't have to, you know, go back and forth with nobody on Instagram or Twitter or any of, the, any of those type of things. I think it's um, just guys tired of that, you know what I'm saying, losing. And guys came in this year ready to, ready to work. They got, you know what I'm saying, the right pieces in here. They got some some great young guys. They got some, some great veterans. And I feel like it's all just coming together, man. And um, I think that may be the difference. You know, guys believing in each other, guys playing for each other and not for self. Um, and guys having fun, man, having some swag and, you know what I'm saying, out there jumping around. And, you know, like I said, I done, I done been a, a part of winning. So uh, just to see this now is special just to see where we came from last year. But I'm not surprised at all. A lot of the players talk about this group. It's a really close-knit unit. Like, you guys hang out together even away from football, outside of the building, and so on and so forth. Do you think that that plays a big part in oh, what you guys do on the field? Absolutely. Absolutely. Just because you just have that natural trust. You know what I'm saying? Just just hanging with the guy and getting getting to know that him as a person and not as a football player because, you know, at the end of the day, one day we are going to have to hang up the cleats. So just getting to know that uh, person as a player is most important. Because, you know what I'm saying, we, we are all more than football players. You know what I'm saying, we people. So once you, once I get to know you and you like, actually become a brother to me, it's different. You know what I'm saying, now our, our connection is so much different. I, I may be, you know what I'm saying, or he, or he may be or something, maybe, you know what I'm saying, and, and the friends or, you know, we all had those moments. But, you know, that brother may be able to calm him down just because of that relationship that you built off the field. No doubt. 
Uh, we talked a little bit earlier about your business. Uh, do you feel it's important for players to have a plan for after they play football? Because relatively speaking, it can be quite a short career. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. And um, I, I do feel like it's important for guys to, you know, try to um, go for after something other than, you know, ball, obviously. Uh, keep the main thing the main thing, of course, but, you know, try to, you know, uh, expand, expand, man. Expand your vision to more uh, broaden. Uh, broaden yourself like don't be just be uh, comfortable with just you know staying the same just because it's, it's so much out here it's so many opportunities that we don't take advantage of as athletes and I think some guys try to wait till it's too late until it's when it's over um, but you know right now is the time like we are the guys that you know kids look up to and you know guys that People watch on Sundays, so I feel like, you know, and, you know, people may feel like it's a distraction. So that's why it's important to make sure you have a good team around you because we don't, we are not obviously able to control everything while being in season. Um, that's why you have to create a great group around you. And uh, that, I feel like that can change. And yeah, um, and me personally, I don't necessarily say that I throw my business on anyone. But I definitely, if anybody have any questions, I'm willing to answer any questions just because I, I want to see everybody eat um, just because, it, you know, and it's personal. I don't want to be personal with, you know, somebody, what they do, what they business, right. you know. So, uh, you know, I stand my lane, but I, I'm also always all ears and I'm always, always a guy that anybody can talk to. It's good to have that veteran leadership, right, on the field, off the field, and it's good that certainly you provide that as one of the captains, one of the leaders for this football team. And, Justin, you know, we really appreciate you setting aside a couple of minutes oh, for well, us here definitely. and uh, joining us on the podcast. And uh, any good plans for the bye week? Or um, Just go home, chill, uh, enjoy, enjoy my family time, just get away a little bit, and uh, probably go up to my school, Illinois, man. So I think we got Purdue this week, so hopefully we get them. Illinois fighting Illini, Richie. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. Justin Hardy, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate your time. Thank My you, mate. pleasure. Thank you. Now, as it's bye week, we're very, very fortunate, very lucky to have the Jets defensive coordinator, Jeff Ulbrick, join us. He's found a little bit of time out of his very, very busy life to come and say hello. Thank you so much for joining us, Jeff, on the podcast. How are we, first of all? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Yeah, very well, thank you. Yeah, we have uh, still a long way to go this season, but at this point you must be absolutely buzzing with how it's going so far. Yeah, excited about the the group that we have. Um, made some tremendous strides, uh, especially from last season, obviously from a personnel standpoint, talent standpoint, but uh, also the guys that have been here, there's been, there's been tremendous growth. Um, I still believe like we haven't even scratched the surface of what we can become and uh, our best ball I believe is is still ahead of us but uh but we're getting better there's there's a growing belief amongst the group so it's uh it's it's it's, a, it's an exciting time especially for a young defense like this that went over the Buffalo Bills. I mean, that's is arguably the number one offense in the NFL. The quarterback himself presents a great deal of challenges, everything they could do, not just with his arm, but with his feet, as we saw in the game. How satisfying is it to be able to keep them in check as well as you did, create the turnovers, and more importantly, walk off the field a winner? Yeah, it's exciting. Um, just I was so happy for the players. You know, um, a lot of the guys, especially the guys that have been here, uh, they haven't had a whole lot of good games period against any opponent um, but to have a game like that against that opponent opponent that is just an absolute pain in the ass in every way um, their personnel from the quarterback to the receivers to the backs to the o-line to the tight ends it's just as complete of an offense as you'll find in the nfl um, to have the game that we had against them i think it's going to it's going to be be huge as far as just what it means to our guys confidence and to have like real validation that um, we're going in the right direction Jeff, let's talk a little bit more broadly about your role within the team. You're the defensive coach. What does that entail? So uh, coordinator is, is the, 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 the term we use, and I think it's, uh, it's correct, you know, in the fact that, you know, I have a lot of really good assistant coaches that work with me. Um, you know, my job is basically not get in their way, you know, collect all the information that they provide and then apply it on game day. Um, so I'm – in essence, I guess, a manager of the defensive coaches and the defensive players. Uh, 
a lot of our work entails individual meetings where the individual coaches run it. There's times where I do have the group um, and we have global messaging, you know, but a lot of their, their time is with the assistant coaches where they get into the fine details of, of their particular position. Um, and then on game day, my, uh, my job is to call the defense, you know, and really that is just, it's a collaboration of all the assistant coaches and, and the input from the players and kind of, uh, you know, you, you gauge the week and how it went and what you like, what you didn't like, and, and, uh, and we let it rip on Sundays. Take the fans inside an average work week for you. We know what happens on Sunday on right. game day, but Monday through Friday, what does that entail for you in terms of the preparation? What's your busiest day of the week? Uh, they're all busy. You know, that's that, it, it's funny because, you know, it's a sport and, and then people see it on Sundays and they think, you know, yeah, they, they probably practiced a couple times, had a couple meetings, organized it up, but it is a full-time adventure. It's, uh, you know, Mondays we come in and, and Monday would be reviewing the, the previous game in the morning, um, reviewing it with the players in the afternoon. And then uh, by the time three o'clock, four o'clock hits on a Monday, we've started the next opponent. Uh, starts with an advanced scouting, which our, our scouting department runs. So they'll come in and and uh, they'll give us all the information that you can't see on tape, injury information, um, uh, potential signals that they saw when they when they when they visited a team, um, uh, the the cadence, the like how how fast they 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 substitute, uh, the rhythm of the game, all the stuff that you can't see on tape, and. Uh, and then from there, we just start diving into the tape. You know, Monday probably we finish up around midnight, I would say, and just getting a preliminary look at them. Uh, Tuesday morning, we come in early and we start as a staff and, and uh, Tuesday is devoted to first and second down. So we'll start with the run game, which takes us, you know, we start around eight o'clock in the morning and, and finish the run game up around 10.30, 11. And then we dive into the first and second down pass game, which takes us probably around two or three in the afternoon. And, uh, and then once we have our first and second down plan in place, then we start building all of our teaching tapes and our, um, our voiceovers and all the cut-ups that we provide for the players, get ready for the meetings the following day. That, that's a late night. That's typically a you know, midnight, one in the morning type, type deal, putting all that stuff together. Um, and then Wednesday hits, and, and then we get the players back. So. Um, starts early in the, the, the morning, meet with the individual coaches first, the position coaches, they start to lay the groundwork of, of the game plan and, and what's specific to their position group. Um, by about mid-morning, 10.30 or so, we meet as a, as a defensive unit, and then I give them kind of the global view of things from a game plan perspective, um, you know, the, the keys to victory, um, some key coaching points, um, and then we, Typically, from there, we transition into a, a walkthrough setting. Walkthroughs, 45 minutes to an hour. Um, eat lunch, come back out, have practice. Practice until, I think, about 3. I'm not sure exactly on these times. And then after practice, we come in. We watch as a, as a defensive staff. We'll watch practice. From there, we'll transition to, to watching practice with the players, finish up with the players around um, typically around 6 or so. And then uh, we're done with the players. Then we come back in, and then we dive into third down. And third down takes us probably one of our later nights. It's just so important, such a critical part of, of, of winning on Sundays. Um, that could be a 1.30, 2 a.m. morning once we finalize the third down stuff, um, prepare for the next day. Uh, and then Thursday is devoted to third down from a player's perspective. So same meeting structure, individuals in the morning, unit in the, the mid-morning, walk through right before lunch, practice, third down emphasis, obviously. And then, uh, and then Thursday night, we'll devote to, to red zone, short yardage, goal line. Um, again, that's another late night. Uh, we finish up with that. And then Friday, you know, same structure as far as individual meetings, unit meetings with the red zone emphasis, practice, red zone emphasis, and a little bit of review of first, second down, and third down stuff. Um, Friday is probably one of our, our uh, lighter days. Uh, finish up usually in the office around, you know, 7.30, 8 o'clock, something like that. So that's my opportunity to go home and actually see my family and feel like a normal human being for a second. <laughs> um, and then Saturday mornings, we come in, have a walkthrough, uh, polish up the game plan, um, 
let the guys know exactly what we're going to do, you know, because as the, the week goes, the plan gets refined, things get taken out, things get added. Saturday is the last day where we can add anything. Um, you know, we've, we've made that pledge to the players that we'd never put anything past that on them. And uh, so polish it up, go out, do our walkthrough, um, get out of here pretty early, you know, usually around noon or one o'clock. And then we have our night meetings. And uh, again, that's the our last opportunity to really touch the players as far as the game plan, uh, keys to victory, all the things that we think are critically important for the win. A um, little bit of a motivational night too, and a, and a time to kind of reflect on on why we're doing this and how we're going to get it done. You know, not just from a you know from a, a mental component, physical component, and emotional component. Kind of comes in, kicks in on Saturday night, and and then uh, Sunday we let it rip. That's a lot of time. You got an right example there. of the sort of. Have you got an example of the sort of motivation that you give the players? Like, is it, is it a case of putting on film clips? Is it a case of giving speeches, putting on music? How does that work? It's all the above, you know, just kind of whatever you're feeling, you know, at that time. And, you know, I always ask myself, what do they, what do they need in this particular week, this night? Um, it's funny. It's like a Buffalo game, in my opinion, Saturday night should be jovial should be there should be levity it should be light you know they're going to be up for it you know they're going to be revved up for it. it's a huge opponent um it's funny i had a, a player he's actually of nigerian descent so he's, he's international for all intents and purposes but he uh i remember him saying to me when it was just it was uh eye-opening for me as a coach where uh it was a saturday night and he's like coach i i love all that you said you got me fired up and revved up but um, I hope you know I'm not going to sleep now because of all that, you know. So <laughs> I've, I've always keeping that into into you know just keep that at the forefront of my thought process on Saturday night. Now, at the same time, I think that there's opponents that at times, and it should never happen, but it does happen. There's human nature involved where it might be a lesser opponent for whatever the reason, their record, uh, the personnel, whatever. You know, those nights you might have to rev them up a little bit and get them. Um, get them in the right space mentally, emotionally, physically, the whole thing. So I think it just depends on the week and the opponent. You played in the league for 10 years. You were a linebacker. You know, at what point of your playing career did you think that, you know, I think coaching might be in my future when my playing days are done? Yeah, it was, uh, um, I had a, a strange career because typically you start out as a special team player, earn your stripes, and then you, you, you grow into a starter. I kind of went the other way. I started in the beginning of my career in the first, shoot, really seven and a half Eight years of my career, I was a starter. And in the back end of my career, I became a special team player. We, uh, we had drafted a, a kid by the name of Patrick Willis. I don't know if you guys are familiar with him. Mm -hmm. Really good linebacker. And, uh, you know, it was, it was one of those things. They had drafted a lot of linebackers in my, in my time with San Francisco. And uh, I felt like I could always beat a guy out. He was a guy I could not beat out. And I knew that my time as, li as a linebacker, at least for the, the San Francisco 49ers, was, was done. And, and I had to, to relish the special team role. In doing that, um, uh, it allowed me to really um, focus on helping Pat and passing everything that I had learned along the way onto him. And uh, I remember it clear as day. We're playing the, the Cardinals and um, he makes a play and he kind of peeks to me on the sideline like, like that was what we worked on. That's what we talked about. That's what we had emphasized. And I remember the joy it brought me. You know, it was it was funny because it was, um, and a lot of people don't believe me when I say this, but it was more joy than I'd ever felt making a play myself. You know, so it was uh, that was kind of the moment that I said, "This is this is something I want to do. This is something I need to do." So it's fair to say that you get the same sort of buzz from playing as you do being a defensive coordinator. Yeah, like maybe even more so. You know, just seeing other guys realize their dreams and, and getting the most out of themselves, you know, as men and as players, you know, that brings me um, way more joy than any, any sort of self accolades that I've ever, ever had. So you were drafted in 2000. Mm -hmm. You came into the league. 
and I'm sure that a lot of fans out there know that Tom Brady, who's still going strong right. for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, yeah. he was in your draft class. He was. You were yeah. drafted three rounds before Tom Brady. Yep. When you see what he's still doing out there, the fact that he's still playing, still playing at a very high level, and your career ended as a player, what, over 10 years ago That's now? Right. You just marvel at, a, at what this guy just continues to yeah, do? Yeah, it makes absolutely zero sense. Because you know how hard it is. Yeah, like I know going into my 10th year how hard it was on me and my body and and my mind and my soul and all of that, you know, to, to think of playing another 14 years or whatever it's been, whatever he's at now, is uh, he's setting records and he's doing things that will never be done again, ever, in my opinion. Um, it's just absolutely amazing and uh, just a credit to him, you know. Obviously the talent, but the ability to – to take care of his body and do all the other stuff that is that has resulted in the in the success that he's had, um, it's just amazing. It is. Would you say that those playing days that you had are integral to your career now? You know, I. Or I not necessarily. You know, I sometimes uh, the the fact I played I think gives me perspective, which helps sometimes when I'm teaching and coaching and and uh, relating to players, communicating. Um, so from that standpoint, I think it, it helps to have a little bit of just, I've been in their shoes and I've walked their walk and I know what it feels like. Um, but at the same time, like, I wouldn't say that it was that necessary to be a good coach. Like I've been around a lot of really good coaches that never played in this league. I've been around a lot of really good coaches that never played football, you know? So I, I think, um, you know, Coaching is teaching, you know, and, and having the ability to, to communicate and to teach and to, to motivate and, and keep them engaged and, and, and reach people with different learning styles and different personalities. I think that's, that's a gift in its own. and It has nothing to do with playing. Um, so, you know, I know that was a long-winded answer to that, but it helps, but I don't think it's, it's completely necessary. You and I were talking last week on the subject of just teaching you know the way that the game is evolving now and the greater emphasis of course placed on safety you know penalties are something that you know the game is being called a little bit more cautious as maybe it was back in the day even when you played for example in your job as a coach now when you're trying to instruct your defensive players as to how to play the game the right way the wrong way has that changed and has it made your job that much more difficult because refs are cracking down a lot more now. yeah it, it, it has from a defensive perspective um the emphasis is safety, and that's huge, and that's necessary, and I'm all for it. So I completely, the reasoning behind it is justified, and uh, and it's a good thing. Um, but it has made our job as defensive coaches a little bit more difficult, just making sure that we're teaching it um, exactly how the refs are going to call it, you know, and and that's us also learning exactly how they're going to call it, and and leaving absolutely zero gray for our players, so they know exactly. Um, you know, what the rules of engagement are, um, you know, we've kind of adopted as of late here just because we, we have been victim to some um, some calls that were uh, that were huge as far as winning and losing games. Um, don't give the, the refs an opportunity to throw the flag. You know, we've kind of gone in that direction. So um, we're going to go the other way, you know, and, and, you know, a lot of teams push the envelope. We're going to go the way of of don't let them throw a flag, you know. So especially when it comes to hitting the quarterback or getting around a quarterback, we just we got to lay off them. You see the ball thrown, you can't breathe on them. You know that's basically what the the league has turned into, and the refs have started to referee it in that way. So we just got to be cognizant of it and teach it and coach it, and emphasize it, and make sure the the players know exactly the the rules of engagement. Jeff, let's talk quickly about one of the players that you may have worked with closely. It's Source Gardner, of course, who has put on some incredible displays in his rookie year. How impressed have you been with the way that he has got up to speed with the professional game? Yeah, it's it. it I I don't know if I've ever been around a rookie have such immediate success. Um, saying that though, being able to observe his process during the week, um, getting to know him on a deeper level, like it. It's starting to all make sense to me. Here's a kid that's got length, he's got speed, he's got foot quickness, he's got instinct. He has all the measurables. He checks every box regarding all that stuff. Um, but as rookies find out right away, that's just one piece of the, the of the pie here. Like he is a guy that is way ahead of his time as far as a rookie's concerned because he's got all the measurables. But at the same time, um, he has created 
an amazing process, especially for a young player. His notes are impeccable. Just, you know, thinking back to this past game, you know, he had 14 pages devoted to Stefan Diggs and every alignment, every release, press, off, um, every formation, every stack, bunch, you know, and then he did it for every single receiver. And then, and then the details within each defensive call and how it pertains to him and, and really starting to learn the information that pertains to him as opposed to just the information that's given to all the players. He's, uh, he's got an opportunity to be great because of that. You know, he's the rare guy that's got all of it, mental, emotional, physical, um, willing to work, willing to pay the price. And, and saying all of that, he's an amazing human being. He's a great teammate. He's selfless. He's, uh, he has got swag and arrogance and cockiness that is uh, endearing at the highest level, you know, where a lot of times that can be, that can turn guys off, especially to a younger player, but these guys just love him, you know, so, so excited about the future that he can have in this league. Well, Coach, we always appreciate you spending some time with us here. Congratulations on this big win. Any good plans for the bye week or? Sleep. Sleep. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Well, you put in the hours. You, you deserve, deserve it. it. Yeah, exactly. You deserve it. See, and that's the thing, Richie. Like, you think about if anybody wants to get into coaching, this isn't exactly the conventional nine to five banker's hours routines or anything like that when you're it talking about life and coaching, right? It is not. <laughs> yeah. Love that. Jeff, you've been amazing. Fascinating stuff. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Appreciate it, Richie.